Hey, this is Michael Pavlovich, and what we're going to do in this video is put our custom insert meshes to work and start creating a creature from scratch. And when I'm creating a creature, what I like to start with is a Z sphere. So we're going to drag one of those out. And to kind of orient ourselves in space here, I'm going to have our floor plane turned on. And let's go ahead and just start making the body of our creature. I'm going to hit X, and then I'll go across, be able to go across the X axis. And I can keep drawing out these Z spheres. So let's make the body of our creature here. I have a vague idea of what I want to do. Nothing real specific, but something spider-like. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting Q to go into draw mode up here, and then I can just click and make a new Z-sphere, or I can click on a pre-existing Z-sphere and draw out another Z-sphere. If I want to draw a Z-sphere out on this Z-sphere that's the same size, I can hold down Shift, and it'll snap to that size. Or if I want to make it a little bit smaller, I can just size to taste. I can hit W to go into move mode, and then move these Z-spheres around. Let's go ahead and change the color of these real quick. So here we've got, let's go ahead and move his shoulders up. And I know I'm going to actually replace these arms with the insert brush, but just while I, just because these sketches and these spheres are so fast to create, I'm going to go ahead and just draw them out to give myself an idea of what this creature is going to look like, and I can start evaluating proportions and, you know, size of appendages and stuff like that on the fly as I go. So there won't be a real surprise when I start adding in my insert meshes, my zombie arms and zombie legs and stuff. There's not going to be a really big discrepancy. Let's go ahead and add another little appendage here. A little grasshopper looking thing. And if I need to scale this one down, I can hit E and go into scale mode. Then go back into Q draw mode and then W move mode and just keep moving stuff around. Draw some more, draw some hips. Another leg here. There we go. That looks pretty creaturey to me. I think that's a good enough start. So let's go ahead and hit A and look at our adaptive skin. And where our adaptive skin settings are over here in the tool menu under adaptive skin. And right now our density is at 2 by default. You can drop that down to 1 and start with a lower res mesh. I think we can do 2. That looks fine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit this Make Adaptive Skin button, and that will throw in our tool palette a Skin Z Sphere. Let's go ahead and select that. And this one you can actually sculpt on. So what you want to do is hit X, so you can go across the X axis again, and let's say we can take the clay brush. You can start building this out, moving the polygons around, and making small modifications here to kind of refine your character. And of course if you want to, you can go to Geometry and hit Divide, and you can continue. Let's look at our polyframe here. This is our poly density. It's not too bad still. And again, you can hit this, use a C brush and kind of refine this thing. You can start putting in landmarks like where you want the chest to go. And this one's kind of a weird one, but it'll make more sense as I go. Where you want the shoulders to go, you can kind of beef up stuff and make these pieces fit a little bit better. Um, but I think this is about kind of where I want to be. And you'll also notice when I go into polyframe mode that the poly spheres. The Z spheres actually gave us polygroups as we went. So everywhere I had a Z sphere, I created a new polygroup across an X axis. So you can actually go in here and show and hide, and we're going to use this to our advantage uh, as soon as we start using our insert meshes. And speaking of, let's go ahead and grab those. I'm going to hit the comma key, and if it, I think by default it'll probably load up tool or something. You want to go to your brushes, and wherever you saved out your zombie brush that you made from our previous brush creation, mesh insert creation video, go find that. Put it in the zombie folder. And I'm going to grab this Insert Zombie Mesh brush. Now again, with this brush selected, when I hit M, it's going to pull up that library of things I can pull from. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is start out with his arm here. So what I'm going to use, what I'm going to do is use that arm to replace this arm. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift and click, Control Shift drag to invert that selection, and then Control Shift and click again. So I've gone ahead and hidden those kind of placeholder proportion arms, and we're going to leave a hole here, which is okay. Because what we're going to do is go over here to the Geometry menu and hit Delete Hidden. Oops. It's going to tell you you can't delete hidden on a mesh that has uh, multiple subdivision levels. That's okay. So we're going to go ahead and Delete Lower, then Delete Hidden, Close Holes, and that's going to actually create a Closed Holes mesh right here, which is its own poly group, which is perfect because what you want to have is a poly group to drag your insert mesh on, and then re it'll actually create a bridge between those two polygons. So. I know it's kind of hard to understand in words, but let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to hit B, 
make sure we have our mesh our brush selection which we do which is up here in this icon here I'm gonna hit M grab the arm I'm gonna drag that on and you want to make sure when you drag it on that you're dragging it and you're touching that polygroup first and you can just drag this out to size here hit W and it auto masks which is uh, useful and you can go ahead and size and shape these arms however you want and if you want to rotate these or whatever and you don't have to worry about getting it perfect because what ZBrush is going to do is go ahead and evaluate these two mesh densities and figure out how best to make these work. So I'm going to I'm going to hold down control and drag, hold down control and drag again, and it's going to bridge that gap perfectly. And if I go out of uh, polyframe mode here, you can actually hold down shift and smooth right across that. You can sculpt right across that, and it'll actually maintain different poly groups. So you can still go through and isolate your arm from your original insert mesh. So now that we get the hang of that, let's go ahead and bring our mesh back, control shift and click, and let's do it again. So let's go ahead and separate these arms out. I'm going to delete hidden again, close holes, go into my brush menu and select our zombie brush, hit M, and let's grab that arm. Now this one might be a little bit tricky because when I drag this arm on, it's going to want to follow that surface normal, and if you end up having this arm cross over, and go into your mesh, let me just show you, like this, and then you try to move it out, it's going to be sticky like that. Um, if that happens, what you can do is, so we've got our brush here, and we've got our arm selected, you can go up here to your d -d 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 picker, and we're going to do orientation, we're just going to click that on. So it's going to draw straight out from that camera view. So I can still touch this poly group, but my arm's going to draw straight out. So I don't need to worry about it crossing over that line which it wouldn't have in that particular case, but it's happened to me a couple times, so just something useful that you might need to know. So let's go ahead and rotate and position these arms. These are going to, these are going to be the underneath arms. They're going to be a little bit smaller. And go ahead and rotate these up. And actually, let's go ahead and move these in and rotate these in just a bit. Oops, not that much. And move them back. Go ahead and control drag uh, swipe twice and ZBrush will fill that gap. Now if it's looking a little bit weird, you can always go back out here and use your move brush and your clay brush to kind of refine this as you go as you're inserting these meshes. And again, I'm not doing a really great job in trying to get this done as fast as possible, so you will probably be more careful with your Z spheres and your insert meshes, making sure everything's cool. But for now, this will be good enough. Now if I wanted to actually make changes to this arm. There's a couple of different ways I can do that. I can hold control shift and go ahead and separate out these poly groups. Control shift drag to just show those. I can control click to mask them out. Control shift to bring everything back and then control click again to invert that mask. And I know that sounds like a lot but once you get used to it it's really not that big a deal to kind of remember though it's really a fluid way to kind of go through and work your mesh over. And then you can go into transpose and you can rotate. Rotate your stuff around. Let's go ahead and move these apart just a little bit. And an easier way to do that actually is if you hit if you have rotate selected and you hold down control and you drag on your mesh, it'll actually evaluate your mesh flow and mask as you go. So if I want to mask out this wrist area, I can hold down control and just drag, and it'll kind of drag and mask and kind of fuzz that mask out as I stop. So you can use that to your advantage too when you're posing out characters. Let's go ahead and rotate his hands down a little bit. And maybe rotate them out and control drag to unmask. So now we got two pairs of arms here. Let's go and put some legs on them. So we'll go ahead and control shift click these placeholder legs out. And you can kind of remember how they went. They kind of knee up and then down this way. I'm going to go again to modify topology, delete hidden, close holes. Go sure, make sure I'm going to hit brush and grab this zombie brush. M to grab a leg this time. Now when I draw a leg out on this mass it's going to go this way, which is fine if I want his legs to point out this way, but I don't. I want them to point out backwards. So what I'm going to do is go to this side of the mesh and then draw the legs out to size here. And let's go ahead and move this into position. And go to our top view. Just kind of rotate these around so they look okay. And then again, control drag twice. ZBrush will close that gap. And let's go ahead and rotate this leg around while we're at it. So I'm going to hold down control and drag and watch it follow the topology there. Drag our transpose line. And our transpose line is going to snap to our mesh. So if I drag from the ankle to the hip here, it's just going to follow that line, which is perfect. 
And if I want to move this in just a little bit to position this like a bone, bone, I can just grab this outer ring and just move it in. And then as I rotate, I can just rotate these legs in really, really nicely. So I actually prefer posing stuff in ZBrush more than any other program that I've used. So I can control drag, make a mask, and with rotate, just go ahead and bend that knee. Uh, an alternative to that, actually, if I hold down control and go to mask lasso, I can drag out a lasso if I want, if I want a really sharp mask across that knee, and then control click to inverse, and then let's go ahead and drag out our rotate line, and you just bend along that knee a little bit sharper. And let's make sure this is okay. Let's go ahead and move these legs in a little bit. And again, if you want to, you can roll roll that um, rotate down and we can rotate his feet in just a little bit. All right, so we got his legs nestled in there. And again, you can turn off polyframe, go into curve, or not curve mode, but a clay brush and just kind of even this mesh out. Or if these hips are too far out, you can use the move brush to move them in. And, you know, and it, it'll always work on your mesh in the round and make sure everything's working. You know, you don't want to work on one view and then turn to the three quarter and go, oh, everything's really gross. So make sure you're always kind of tumbling around your object and you got the ZBrush navigation down and everything's looking cool. In fact, these shoulders look a little bit broad. I'm going to bring these in just a tad. All right, so, uh, so far so good. And we just got one more leg to put on really quickly. So control shift, drag, go ahead and get rid of that first part. Control shift, control shift to get rid of those. And we'll go to again, delete hidden, close holes. That'll give us our poly groups. And I'm going to go to, now this one might give us trouble when I draw out that leg like I was talking about before. So we might have to do our trick. So I'm going to go to brush, grab the zombie brush, M, grab his leg. And of course we went to the other side of the mesh. So, so now when I draw this leg out, no, they're still okay. So we don't have to use our picker trick. So let's go ahead and make our legs this big. And if you want to make them bigger, one thing you can do is of course use your transpose scale. Or if that's taking too long, you can go to deformation and then just do a size of 100 or whatever size you want to make and that'll make them real big real fast. So let's go ahead and move these legs in here. Perfect. Let's go ahead and rotate this up. And so what it's going to do is connect these hip holes here from our mesh to these this section right in here. And let's go ahead and bend our leg a little bit. I think that's how our original Z spheres were. So it's going to go ahead and bend up, and then we'll go back in and bend this leg back down. So control drag, control drag again. That'll work. Going to rotate, control drag to get our knee selection. Let's rotate this down. And rotate his feet. And let's go ahead and rotate his feet in. Make him look, I don't know, this looks creepier to me. All right, I think we're good to go. So we'll go back into polyframe mode. And if there's any little cleanup stuff you want to do, go ahead and grab your clay brush, your clay buildup, or your clay tubes, or standard brush, or whatever you want to use, and go around your mesh and make sure everything's just the way you want it. And frankly, you know, for demonstration purposes, this is good enough for me. So I think I'm going to keep it as it is right here. And we'll go ahead, and next we'll go ahead and insert some chest and some back stuff. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and put a head on this guy so we can kind of see what this character is going to end up being. So I'm going to go to brush. Grab our brush, M, and I got two versions of the head here. I got the head with the eyeballs and the head without the eyeballs. So let's go ahead and take the head with the eyeballs. And for this one, if I was to drag a head, let's go ahead and do it. If I was to drag the head on this mesh right here, and since I drew it on this poly group, this, this is a big poly group. It goes all the way around the back and all the way around the front. So if I control drag and control drag again, it's going to connect all of this which actually looks kind of cool, but if I want to be a little bit more specific about where that's going to go, I need to make my own poly group. Easy way to do that is hold control, and let's go to mask lasso and go to mask pin. We'll just drag on a mask here where we think we want our head to kind of attach to, and then I'm going to hit control W. That's the hotkey for, let's go down here to poly groups, that's a hotkey for group mask clear mask. If you hover over that, you'll see that the hotkey is control W. So we had it masked, it grouped mask, and then it cleared it for us. So now what we're going to do is we'll go back to our brush, hit a, oops, hit M, and we'll grab the eyes, the head with the eyeballs, and drag that on our mesh. And instead of just plopping it right on there, what I'm going to do is actually move this head out a bit. So we're going to make ZBrush interpolate between this mesh and that mesh, and actually give us a, a neck. So go ahead and move this out, make sure it's the size we want. I'm going to control drag, control drag again. And ZBrush will look at this opening 
and this hole opening on this mesh, and it'll actually interpolate between those two for us. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and let's go out of polyframe mode, move this mesh around a bit, make sure that everything's the way we want it. Let's go ahead and dig this in. Let's give him some nice neck space up in there. And I'm not really concerned about my topology right now. And actually, ZBrush does a stellar job. Let's turn on polyframe again. Does a really good job of having your insert mesh geometry work with the Z sphere geometry and or the Curie mesh geometry, whatever you started with. It does a really good job going between those. So this is a perfectly sculptable mesh. I get sculpt on this quite a bit before I'm going to start feeling the growing pains of having to Curie mesh and kind of get my make my topology nicer. So it's it's a very very workable mesh as is. But of course, you know, towards the end I probably am going to Q remesh and go ahead and project all. But so we got our head on there and we of course we have our ZBrush made neck for us. And let's go ahead and do some chest and back.